So now that I'm back <clears throat> with a new phone, and hopefully we'll get the old phone, and then we can make some pretty cool videos with two phones. Um, I wanted to kind of update you on the Ukraine war. Um, I'm sure you can follow it all online. It's all very fascinating, but um, looks like uh, Soledad uh, is, uh, is, is going to fall. Um, but the, the thing that, that I kept hearing about and I didn't really understand was this Wagner group. Who the hell is the Wagner group? I mean, I thought these were Russians that were going in and uh, taking uh, the Donbass or uh, the Soledad or whatever, you know. And so I, I finally decided to do some research on that. <clears throat> and I, and, and it, anyway, it took me a while to figure this out. So there's this guy, um, I don't know, uh, Yev, Y-E-V-G-E-N-Y, Yevgeny, Yevgeny, P-R-I, G-O-Z-H-I-M, Progrzagning. Um, I think he's like a Russian oligarch, and uh, he heads up the uh, the Wagner Group. So who exactly is this Wagner Group? Well, I guess they're a bunch of Russian mercenaries. And uh, as you do more and more research, uh, they're basically uh, just criminals. Um, well, for the most part, I don't know, probably made up uh, probably some Russian veterans. Um, and that, that was one thing I did want to talk about. You know, that's, that's where the flaw in our military is, is that, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately with experience comes wisdom and, uh, we need more older people in our military, but our military really just wants 18 to 22 year olds. And then after that, uh, you, you go into command and, uh, and end up in Washington, DC. But anyway, um, but so what this group does, and they've been doing this since 2014, and I, I had no idea. I never, you know, I God knows, I, I consider myself kind of geopolitical and follow things. But uh, it was back when the uh, um, U.S. and, and uh, NATO did the coup in Ukraine and installed a, a government that was friendly to NATO. And so the Wagner Group actually came into the Donbass region and they were helping them out. But they've also been operating in a lot of other places uh, as mercenaries. Uh, you got Syria. Um, let's see, Central Africa. Uh, where else? Libya. Um, Mali. So they've, they've basically been, been the, the mercenaries for Russia for, since 2014 to, for quite some time. And so what is their actual function and, and how, do, how do they operate? Well... There's video of this guy, uh, Prague, Prague Zongning, or whatever you, how you ever, man, I wish I could speak Russian. Um, however you pronounce his name, um, this bald guy, and uh, he's standing in front of a bunch of um, uh, criminals, and he just tells them, he says, look, um, you know, if you, if you want your freedom, uh, you're going to go fight, uh, and you're going to be the front line uh, um, troops uh, that many of you are going to die. But in six months, uh, we'll give you your freedom back into um, uh, Russia. So imagine that incentive. Imagine if you're in jail for a crime or a crime that you didn't commit, you know, either way. And somebody offers you your freedom. And basically all you got to do is go fight someplace, whether it be Mali or Ukraine or Libya or whatever. And in six months, uh, you're going to come out and be a free person uh, with a new chance in life. I think I'd take that chance, uh, but it seems like, I mean, I, and I've heard different amounts of numbers, 10 to 15% of them die uh, on the front line. I mean, and these are the shock troops. So they're t basically Russia is emptying its prisons and turning them into shock troops to fight against the Ukrainians. And if you watch videos on Rumble, uh, it's been pretty damn effective because the Ukrainians were saying these guys are relentless. They just keep coming at you. They don't stop. Well, I mean, and, and the reason for that is <laughs> this this was crazy, too. It's fight or die. I mean, it's kind of like the old days in, uh, when Stalin, um, when the, the Russians would just send their troops in and wave after wave against the Germans. And if they turned around to retreat or run back, uh, their own troops would fire on them and kill them. Um, so it was fight or die. And it sounds like th these guys are kind of given the same option. 
You know, if they if they get to Ukraine and it gets too rough on them and they just won't fight no more, then um, they're not going to get their freedom. But the thing I did find interesting about the whole story was that uh, and I, some Russians are a little bit worried about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, and I would be too. Imagine, you know, a hardened uh, uh, pedophile or a, a, a rape. Of course, and then, of course, the Wagner boss, <laughs> he, he's giving them a lecture when he's setting them free into Russia. He says, don't rape nobody. Don't commit no crimes. And you're going to be okay. Now, how many of them are going to listen to that? I don't know if these are hardened criminals. But I, it's, it seems like a good way to empty your prisons. Just send them into Ukraine or all around the world since 2014. Uh, so this Wagner Group, uh, and, and by the way, another thing that was interesting was the Wagner Group gets about 30% or more pay than the average Russian soldier. So they're extremely... Wa so... Think about it. You're going from being a prisoner in a Russian prison, which I imagine is not a very pleasant place to be. I mean, uh, unlike our woke prisons here in the United States, you're going to get paid a, a good sum of money. You got a damn good chance, you know, if you can survive, you know, whether it be 90% casualties or 10% or 15% casualties, the, the figures are all over the place from everything that I could learn. And then you get to come back and, and you're a free man with lots of money in your pocket uh, and, and set loose. And, and, and by the way, I mean, it sounds like they're keeping their promise. They're actually setting these guys free. And imagine they have to. Imagine if word got back to the prisons that it's all a lie and that, yeah, you come. it was kind of like the running man. Remember with uh, Schwarzenegger back in the day? I mean, if you, if, if you found out that you know, the prisoners are coming back and they're actually not being set free. They're being put back in prison or some different prison. Um, this whole scenario wouldn't work. And if it's been going since 2014, I have to believe that they're keeping their word and giving these guys freedom. So that's it on that. So let's get into uh, uh, watching the world burn. Uh, I was watching a video by, uh, you know, the Economic Ninja. You know, I watch him. I, I like him a lot. Um, and he got a new investment and I just put up a buy on it and I... Uh, it's copper. And, uh, and by the way, I, I, I think I told you that SD Bullion still has the deal up on copper rounds. You can buy them. They're $1.39 well, I mean a, a piece. Um, and you can buy a bunch of them. I bought a bunch of them. I mean, for $1.39. Because, you know, if, if the stuff does hit the fan, I'm, you know, I think you're going to need something besides silver, gold, and platinum to, to be able to barter for for food and everything else you're going to need. And I think copper rounds are going to work and copper's becoming much, much more rare. And you'd have to watch the video by the Economic Ninja, but he did give me a ticker symbol for you. It's a J-U-B-A-F, J-U-B-A-F. Um, he gives the whole uh, reason that he likes this company because they're, they're a small company. They're right in there with a bunch of big players uh, in, a, in, a, in a copper area where, and they think they found a, a good deposit. And I, uh, that either means the big boys are going to buy them out or maybe they'll develop it on their own. And uh, so it's, it, it's speculative. You might, you might make some money on that. Um, saw a video today also that, uh, well, I mean, Poland, from what I understand, they're going to send some hardware to Ukraine. But at the same time, uh, I also saw another video that they're collapsing now under the, the well, just like we are here in the United States, uh, under the burden of all of the, uh, well, in, over there, the migration is the Ukrainians that are flooding into uh, Poland, and they can't take care of them all. I mean, imagine, I think it's been like two, two or three million people have fled Ukraine now, and they, they're all in Poland. I mean, how do you take care of that many people? They can't make a living. It's not like they're out farming the land or, or working a productive job. They're just refugees. And the Polish people can't take care of them. So the, what I was seeing was that Poland's getting next to collapsing under the burden of all these people coming into the country. And yet, and yet their globalist leaders <laughs> are still sending hardware to Ukraine. And it wasn't much. It was only like 16 tanks, 16 leopard tanks or something like that. Uh, anyway, that was... Um, so they're collapsing under the, um, the weight of all of the uh, Ukrainian refugees that are coming in, just like in the United States here, 
uh, uh, we're going to collapse under the burden of uh, all of the people that are flooding into our country. Uh, of course, we've had hundreds of thousands die from from, and the Democrats are all for it. The Democrats love an open border. That's that's what they're all about. Um, you know, that's that's be a Democrat. That's what you need to do. And by by the way, the Democrats. I mean, they're all for the war. Not a single Democrat doesn't want the war. Now we got the still we got the Rhino and the neocon Republicans that are for the war. Um, I'm totally against it, but that's just me. I guess I'm just a peace. Peace person, you know, I'm good. Thank God I'm not a Democrat. That's all I got to say. Uh, what, oh, yeah. The, the last thing that I'll end up with here was uh, China just bought another $30 billion in gold. <laughs> wow. What do you think that means? I mean, leave a comment below. Why are Russia, China? Well, and of course, that was another thing that I saw in the news today, that India, I mean, they basically come out and said they're, they're neutral in this whole damn thing. They, they got no stake in the game. They're not going to support the Western nations in their sanctions against Russia. Oh, that's another thing. There was there's some new sanctions, <laughs> like they're going to work. Oh, my God. Oh, they put a cap. It's it like, well, you, you, can only, you can buy oil this low or, or spend this much. Holy shit. When are they going to learn? Um, anyway, but yeah, so Russia and China, well, mainly China, is buying up another $30 billion in gold. So, you know, I think it's becoming much and much and much more scarce as these precious metals are getting bought up all around the world. 85% uh, of the world is buying precious metals, but the people in the United States, um, they don't know what's going on. And so that's why I make these videos. That's it. That's it for this video. Sorry, I've been offline. I, like I said, the guy, whoever he is, he picked up my phone. Sounds like he's trying to get it back to me. And uh, that was my previous video. You might want to watch that on what to do in case you lose your phone uh, and how stupid I was. I didn't have an alternate means to make videos other than my GoPro, which is a lot more difficult than just making a video and uploading it. So peace out, stay free, and it's good, 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 good to live in the free, free, free state of Florida. Always finish my list under the great leadership of Governor DeSantis.